How's it going everybody? Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. Someone had asked me if I could record the process of me creating a lo-fi hip-hop beat on the MPC Live and I'm extremely flattered by that because I'm not really an expert in creating lo-fi. I mean to be honest I'm still not as good as a lot of the lo-fi producers out there but I figured I could still show you my process of how I create a, a lo-fi inspired type of beat. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. So it's gonna be focused more on a step-by-step -step basis than the actual overall beat itself. So I hope the beat comes out cool, cause I mean. Okay, obviously one of the first things that I need to do is fire up the MPC Live. I'm going to sample from one of the records in my collection. The question is, which record? Thinking about it, thinking about it. Uh, do I really want this one? Uh, uh, okay. Okay. I'm going to skim through it, and we're going to sample it into the MPC live. I set my BPM to 77. Um, no real reason. Yeah, there's no real reason to why I chose 77. It's just a lucky number, I guess. So since I have sounds already in this specific program, I'm going to go to the channel mixer and I'm going to highlight my sample program and go to my inserts. Now what this does, it allows me to manipulate the entire program without having to go into each individual pad, which is very tedious and very time consuming. I think one of the first effects that I would like to add is a little bit of reverb. Before I do that, Let's assign everything to a group. To the LFO modulations, I'm gonna set each pad to group one. Where was I? Okay, back in channel mixer inserts. Um, the reverb is a little crazy. I think the pre-delay is a little too much, so I'm gonna bring that down a tiny bit. I want a little bit of pre-delay decay. I'll turn that down to 30%. I'm going to add the emulation of the MPC 60. It's not too crazy noticeable, but it's noticeable enough for you to know that it's there. Now they do have a resampling feature, which I can actually pick and it lets me decimate the sound quality of the sound, which would be great for lo-fi. I've actually never messed around with it. So let's see what it does. Cool. The MPC Live is a little bit limited in terms of the amount of effects that you can add. So you have to kind of pick your effects wisely. There is also this, this tape delay effect. It's called tape sync. Because it is a delay function, it's going to delay the time of the sample when you hit the pad. So our goal is to try to get that to delay without it delaying too much. That's not too bad. So I'm going to turn down the amount of uh, wet signal on the resampler. And I think that'll be it for now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the program edit window. And this specific uh, tab allows me to modify the entire program again. So I think one of the things that I want to do, because it seems like the sample's a little low, I'm going to raise the volume by two decibels. And then I'm going to play with the semitones to see what kind of sounds cool. My next step is to record, record absolutely nothing. Lo-fi is kind of categorized as noisy. Now that I sampled some air into the MPC Live, one of the things that I wanna do 
is normalize it. I know that sounds crazy, but the louder the better. So when I assign that to a program, which I'm going to assign to my drum program, I'm going to have that noise and that noise is going to tie everything together. So I have my drum sounds loaded up. Most likely I'm going to be still tweaking with the sample a little bit just so I can get it right. So let's record the drums. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of the drum sounds that I'm using have a low pass filter on it to cut off a little bit of the higher frequencies. If we're trying to achieve a sound of low fidelity, then the drum sounds can't have too much of the top end, if that kind of makes sense. Now this is where it gets tied all together because earlier you guys saw me record some noise. I didn't record anything else. It was just simply white noise. So this is where it gets interesting. Now if I want to take it a step further, I can literally just put the needle on the record and sample more noise into the MPC Live. The more noise, the better. I like to create a lot of different patterns. So that's exactly what I did. I wanted to show something very interesting. So let's say my beat was at 120, right? I'm not too sure what it's called. I believe it's halftime. So I click on it, right? And it takes me to 60 beats per minute. It reminds me kind of, of FL Studios gross beat. <laughs>
pretty cool, huh? I actually kind of like it better at 60 beats per minute than the original 77 beats per minute that I had initially picked. I don't think this video is very helpful, but I mean, I hope, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I want to say Merry Christmas to all of you and your families. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.